So, finally. <sighs> well, that was a big pain in the ass because it was really, 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 really wet. Really wet. Like, really wet. Everything that was standing, that was dead, was just... <sighs> so, in the end, see that big stump over there? That's a big gun. And in that big gun, there was one big plank. And that big plank is now in there. <laughs> yep. Nice and dry and full of resin and very, very hard to pry off. But it's a matter of determination. And of good tools. Okay, that's the kind of tool that you need for a beast of a job like that. This thing's called a hog. <laughs> so it's a good reason. That's the kind of tool you need for a job like that. God, I smacked it into that thing. I bashed it and I levered on it. And I pranged it and I crashed it and I mashed it and I just smashed it until until it came off. And now I got a fire. That works. Huh. Might go and do a bit more in that. Sometimes you just gotta get the big guns out and not take no for an answer. First, we're gonna have a cup of tea though, because you do have to hydrate. Now I brought it in my thermos flask, but this is good enough to actually cook it on now. There. So the plan is now not to go and smash that whole thing to pieces for this fire. Because you never know when I might need it again. Just take what you need. I can get on with it. Oh god. It's just a matter of I don't know, is it a matter of stubbornness? Is it a matter of determination? Uh, is it just perhaps lack of imagination that it could be any other way than just to succeed at some point? I mean, I really don't know. But what I do know is that I made an effort and now I got a fire. And uh, I'm gonna make, be making some more effort to keep it that way. But, you know, that's what it is. You just never ever give up. So you get what you need. And what you need is maybe not always what you want. And there's the wisdom in that as well. Learning the difference. Uh, uh, look at this now. My actual base logs are burning. The logs that I use, soaking great logs that I use to build this fire on. Now they are actually burning too. I hadn't even intended for them to burn. I just wanted them to base, but they're burning now, look, see? Underneath, there's flame. <laughs> yep, there you go. Well, that'll be good for a few hours now, I'll tell you that. Sheesh. Sometimes you just have to make a very big, 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 big effort more than you thought, but it works out in the end, as you can see. Right in there, that big old beast here. Just imagine how those things are going to burn now. Long time! There's a couple back here as well, I just need to stack those, I just need to stack those up. This like a reflector, but I'm not gonna. In fact, because I'm not, if I was staying out over here overnight, then that's what I would exactly do. I'd be arranging these logs here into a proper nighttime, long fire, long burning, slow burning heat producer. But I'm not. I'm going back to the house. So now that I've made my point. And now that I've got the fire where I want it to be, yes, now I'm good. So, fortifications for the journey. I've had something to drink. 
had some snacks and I have my usual little bag of tricks here, wormwood oil, rescue remedies, some CBD oil to help lubricate my joints and various other good bits and bobs here for various types of ailments. This is peppermint oil, Japanese Heilpflanzenöl, which you can take internally. I write it on here just in case. You can use this for lots of things, so it's good to have it with you. CBD oil, just universal good pain reliever and awesome for your joints. It's like a lubricant for your body. Rescue Remedy as a pump spray and then a variety of other goodies. Wormwood oil to help with your ow ass. Plenty to drink, both um, both ready-made in the thermos and uh, cookable and uh, yeah, time to go back now. So now I'm just cruising home. Nice rhythm, mostly downhill. Snow's kind of slushy frost. It's all right, it's not powder, but it runs. Gotta be relaxed. River alongside here. Also nice. No, I'm just alternating gliding, doing some kicking. It's not really a much for uh, pure powder houndery, it is not, but it ah, gets you home, you know? Gets you places. It's kind of the idea, isn't it? To go places. I don't know, I think it is. Have some fun along the way. Look at some cool stuff. I don't know about you, but I'd sure rather be skiing than walking than this stuff. Really, I would. So a nasty cut up logging road like this is um, obviously not fun. So what you do is you skirt around the side where the freshies are, right here. See, don't put up with crappy rutted snow. That's not fun and it's not efficient. You want to be efficient and get home with the minimum of effort. So it's that along here, see, so simple. And just keep optimizing all the time where the best snow is and what the best conditions are and what the best stride is and what the best movement and how to do it. All about efficiency and smoothness. I mean, really. A person could get carried away in a place like this. A person really could. But there's always a way home. And it's important just to keep moving, especially when the night is falling. Yeah, sometimes it's gentle, sometimes it's brutal. I mean, the snow changes every second, so it's just what's best, really. Like here, you know, do I take the, do I take the icy, brutal, uh, grooves here, fast icy grooves. Do I cruise along on the side? Well, since I know it and I know what's below there, I'll take the icy grooves. If I didn't know it was around the corner, eh, maybe I'd stick to the right here some, but I know it's there. So, see ya! Man, it is not nice, but it's sure fast. Woo! These guys are cool. Really, really cool. Great thing you can. No train. Always, always before. That you either can stop or you're prepared that you can't stop. And you know when you're going to be able to stop. That's the deal.
fast. Rule number one about skiing and filming is that you must first live and then you must ski and then you can film. Yeah, in that order, live, ski, film. It doesn't count if you crash, okay? It doesn't count. It does not count. Tomahawks doesn't matter how cool the crash was unless you ski out of it, in which case it wasn't really a crash. No, if you crash, it doesn't count. So don't crash. Okay, so the key to skiing that stuff, the crappy chopped up stuff, is basically just stay relaxed because it will kick your skis all over the place. And it will be suck, but just relax. See? Just like that. Let's get your skis on like crazy. Swing on the bob sled run. And sometimes it's really not fun when it closes your skis out like this. So when it does that, you have to already see that coming and pick out, you know, just literally pick one of your skis out and, uh, sorry, keep on my own tire here, and put it into the next rut. Or else at some point these things do converge and you're going to take a smacker. A nasty high-speed snacker because these ridges are kind of thick in between so just be smart so um, sometimes the head torch is as much for being able to just see the fine structure of the snow and these ribs here on the side of these uh, on the side of these uh, logging tracks are often really really helpful because you can smash these things down the skis in a sort of snow plow um, and get, generate lots and lots of braking power, so don't neglect these things. You can just you can just ride over them, I'll tell you. You can just ride over these things like this. So yeah, uh, go fast where the risks are uh, manageable by you, or you think that that's a reasonable risk. Uh, take every opportunity to regain control if you think you're not quite in it and uh just don't forget to relax and have an awesome time because i mean how awesome is this right just fab fab who gets to do this kind of stuff right just takes a little bit of uh daring and a bit of carefulness and carefulness a bit of you know care and thoughtfulness and staying aware of the situation and you can have an awesome time. And you get stronger and stronger all the time. <laughs> hey, and you know, if it's going to be a little longer than you thought, it really is nice to send a little... Uh, sign a life home so I use a Delorm inReach for that it communicates by email uh, and SMS because our area here has no cell phone signal whatsoever at least in this valley so I just let them know hey I'm fine quite close to parking lot now my ETA don't make them worry then you get more freedom to play outside it's real simple Okay, so this is what a Weiderast usually looks like. And sometimes you will not be able to see it until it's way too late, especially if you're in this icy stuff here with uh, all tracked out like this and all trapped and you're going fast. This is, uh, this is what you don't want to meet at 35 kilometers an hour, I can tell you that much. And there is not enough room. There is not enough room okay let me tell you again it looks like there might be enough but there's not not on that side and not on this side and the consequences is barbed wire and uh leg breakers here okay so no you go the slow on the wider it's better okay nice and gentle So I was kind of thinking about what to really call this, because it's not really adventure Nordic 
because, you know, I'm in my backyard in the end. But it's also not really loipa um, or anything. So maybe it's rugged backcountry Nordic or rugged Nordic, rugged Nordic cruising or I don't know. I mean, I've got everything with me I needed for overnight in my backpack here. Uh, my tools for making fire. I had my Polish poncho with me, my survival candle, down jacket, plenty of food. I already know that I can do 14 days without any food at all and then with also limited water and no water at all for the last three days except for purely medical reasons and under those circumstances I can take uh, 14 kilos up five kilometer knee deep uh, wade of snow with 500 to 1000 vert um, with no skis so I mean this is this is no load at all and I have food so four or five days, absolutely no problem. Uh, not particularly comfortable, but no problem at all. That's what we mean by actually being all terrain and being rugged. Any weather, any conditions, even if it just hosed down with rain, it wouldn't matter. I put, I tie my skis to the side of my pack. I put my Polish poncho over my loading and just walk. Uh, if it's absolutely dire freezing, put my down jacket on. If it gets even colder than that, put the Polish poncho over that and just walk. If it's a blizzard, I put my Polish poncho on, I put my uh, put my down jacket on, I put everything underneath, I sit on my skis and on my uh, on my backpack and I light the survival candle underneath and I got 36 hours of heat, no problem. That's the point, right? That's the point. Now the point is, go home and have some tea. That's what the point is now. <laughs>